This is Pam, Flower Patch Farmhouse, and a request was made on how I got the faux wood background on my um, two tutorials for the Indian paintbrush and the Texas blue bonnets. And I um, I started this already on another board that did not have a wet background. And I showed you then it, there were some things I missed. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo that portion and I may or may not show that video. I'm, I'll decide later as I'm putting these all together. Whoops, I was shaking my paint with it open. Um, but I had mentioned in the other one that you could start with a wet background because the canvases do tend to drag and I thought maybe I'd show how you can do that. Now this is wicker white, plaid folk art, wicker white, and I put a puddle there. It may not be enough. My brush. This is a low Cornell white nylon two inch. I like the broader brushes for backgrounds. It just gets them done faster. Um, you can use any flat brush. It's just a smaller one will take longer. And I'm just going to put a loose or a thin white coat on here. Now you're going to have to work fast to keep it wet, to work wet into wet because that is the nature of acrylic paints. They dry fast and then you have um, it lifting on you. So you get it covered on here. Don't be too uh, concerned about tidiness because you're going over this. Now my palette is going to have three colors on it. I'm going to have the white, a dark brown. This is a called real brown. Usually I have it burnt umber as my dark brown. Um, but it doesn't really matter. And then um, the other one I used a raw sienna. I think I'm going to go with the camel this time. This is plaid folk art camel. You can go with whatever colors you want your wood to look like. In the other tutorials that I spoke about earlier, um, I had a lot of gray. So it was like a grayed out barn wood. Okay, so here's how I load my brush. This is the part I missed in the other, uh, other demo I was doing. Load with white. Dip one corner in your camel and one corner in your dark brown. You could even do a black here if you wanted something. I got that in the wet paint, but it's okay. So now that it's wet, it kind of really goes along smoothly. And I'm just reloading the same way I had it loaded before. Now on a canvas, the wet background really will come in handy because the canvases do tend to drag more. Their surface just sucks up the paint. Now get it on there and then you can just come along and smooth. You don't want to overwork it. And if it's you don't have enough dark streaks, you want more, just go reload with the dark, bring a streak in. And um, then if you've got one too dark, you can do just the opposite. Go back with some white, go over it. Now remember, and I brought this out in my other one, this is just the background for your painting, it's not the star of the show. So just get some streaks in there. And then that's what you want, streaky paint. And we're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back in and we will put in the board lines. You have, I just grabbed what I could find really quick. I wanted a medium brown, a dark brown, and the white. And then you just start laying on your paint. And you see it's dragging even a little bit on here. On a canvas it would drag a little bit more. I want to get a little more water. I just dip the very tip of my brush into the water thing. And then I'm going to overlap here. So you want the streaks. Don't overwork it. And you can kind of smooth that through if there's any part that's too light, too dark. Now it's a little lighter um, than maybe you want. That's okay. You can come back in and darken it. It's um, easier to darken on this than it is to lighten. And you do kind of want it on the lighter side, or at least I usually do. You can have it darker, but the flowers will show up better if that's what you're going for as a painting with flowers. On a lighter background, when it's darker, you really have to, I do, undercoat the flowers with a white. You see, this is a crackle area that was on my board. That wouldn't happen on a, on a uh, canvas. 
So I'm just working it all along and I want all the streaks. Like I said, don't overwork it so that it, that it uh, oh, blends them all together. Now, okay, so you see I, I've lost kind of my dark brown. So I'm just going in and loading a corner with the dark brown, working it in and then just add it in. And while the paint's still kind of wet, it just kind of works just fine. Now along the edges, sometimes it's hard to get that. Sometimes you got to get the wet paint on there and then restroke. Again, that upper part isn't covering, so I got to go over it. Now you could quickly do a very light coat of something. It could be the white, it could be uh, a light tan, and then come and do the three load of the brush and then it'll it'll work across and you might find that easier you work the streaks across on a wet surface now the thing with acrylics is if they start they get to a point of drying they will pull up meaning the wet paint will pull the dry paint up and then you'll get these ugly patches and you just kind of look at it you can walk away and decide if that's what you want if you want to do something a little different, but you just want the streaky effect. And then you're going to come back in and you're going to add details. Now remember, this is supposed to be a background for other things, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be the main eye catcher of the painting. So uh, don't overstress what it looks like here because it will be covered. Now we're going to create our board lines. Now if you wanted to make them perfectly straight, what I would suggest is using a ruler or an actual board. Now I'm going to line this up and make sure you have it. You could measure, which I would recommend. Let me show you how to measure. Like if you wanted it to be a three inch board, excuse me while I reach for my tape measure. Put a little mark at the three inch point and at the three inch point. Now to hand do it, I would, this is, uh, I've turned to a three quarter inch flat one stroke brush and here's my paint. There's the brown I've been using on here. I'll get a little bit of that in there. And then I'm gonna go into some black. This will really make the lines stand out. Now this is dry now. And if I wanted to use a board to get a straight or line, that's how I would do it. And I would just drag along the board. I'm putting a lot of pressure on there. And you can see it makes a pretty straight line. But for old wood, Really, I'm, I'm reloading my brush. Every time I go away and then I come back, I am reloading my brush. Now, we, I'm trying to get it to a chisel edge, and I can go and guesstimate another, however wide. You don't, it doesn't have to be exactly the same width. And then I'm just dragging my brush. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can give more pressure and less pressure, and it just makes the gap in the wood seem like there's, you know, it's gnarled there and it's um, eaten away. And there you have a more artistic board. And here you have a straight one. Now I'm not into straight. I like the old gnarly look. So to kind of blur that out, I'm reloading with the other colors and I'm kind of going to kind of come along there. And it's a little bit dark. In the dark side so more white and just kind of blend it in and then you can uh, play around with it get the colors you want don't really worry about it as it dries too it'll change and you can see how that can work now I'm going to go in, I'm getting a little bit more water on my brush, just I barely touch the tip into the water. And I'm getting the black on it, and I'm going to do like I did before. See, I'm kind of 
far back on my brush and I'm just dragging it along. I don't want it to be perfectly straight, so I'm not minding about all the little streaks and what have you. And you notice the boards are not perfectly the same width. If you want them the same width, you measure and then it's that way. Um, these two look like they're very similar in size. Whatever, if your eye doesn't uh, bother you on that as far as artistically, then we're fine. Now, I don't know which way we want the flowers. We could have them painted up this direction. Let me move this. Where the flowers would be up here, so it would go over top of these. Now we're going to come in and we're going to do some of the details on the board, like knots and, and lines and stuff like that. Now we're going to attempt, and I say attempt because it's kind of a trial and error process, uh, to put some wood grain in. Now uh, you'll notice here how this is a little smeared out from when uh, we left off before. And that's because I thought it was just too stark of a line, so I took my brush, dipped it in water, and I just kind of went along it. I did this one too, but this one was drier. And it just kind of created a shadowing effect beside it and took it down a notch. And that's totally uh, optional. That's not something you have to do. It's just if you think, hmm, that's a little darker than I want. Okay, that being said, now we're going to do I, the details. And that's the knots and some lines. And so here's some black. I don't want it really, really black. And so I mix a little bit of brown in it. And if, if you want, you can put a little whiter white in it. It's still a little too thick. I'm trying to get it to be easier to drag and make thin little lines. Now, I don't know exactly where my flowers are going to be. I don't even know what design I'm putting on this. Uh, maybe a heart with violets or something. I did a, a calendar page with violets and I should do a tutorial on how to paint them. So if that had a heart there, some of it would be covered. It may not even show. So let's just Oh, here's like a, a knot there, and then I'm dipping in my water, getting a little more black, brown, working it in, and I'm holding my brush back. This isn't a very long one, but it doesn't need to be. And I'm just going to draw some thin lines and come around. They skip, they get thicker, they get thinner. And you could do a whole knot if you want to just a round knot just like that. And then you can draw like that kind of along there. And knots are usually where limbs have come out of a tree or the wood. So um, if you think about it, it's going to have graduating or more lines coming out because it had other layers that that grew and you can have a knot that's just kind of a half knot over here and then have a line coming down and they don't have to always go all the way down and you can have kind of squiggly it doesn't have to be straight you're just giving character and as I stated from the beginning, this is the background. This is not the detail. This is not the, not, I shouldn't say the detail. This isn't really the star of the show. You're really going to be focused on the flowers and this is all going to fade to the back. Now, if you want to add a little highlighting, you kind of scrape off some of the black, get some water, get a lighter color on there. A lighter color, kind of highlight around that, kind of make it pop. The same here, kind of accentuate it. And if you get something too light or too dark, then just go back in and add a darker color. And we're just adding in little bits here and there. You don't want to overdo it. And like, I'm kind of got a lot over there and not here, so I need to step back, look at where I need to add stuff. I'm getting more water on my brush. 
because I want this paint to kind of run inky. It doesn't have to be opaque, meaning so solid. This is hints of things. See how this is skipping and it has a little white in it. So it's a little lighter. Whoops, I got too much on there. I didn't pay attention. So you can kind of think about, okay, this had even that going around it. I need something a little darker over here. And you kind of see where we're going with that. And let that dry. I might even fill in this one just a little bit more at the top. Give it a little shape there. And that one's a little dark, dark, and then lighter. And you can even put a knot on one of the fence lines if you want. So it gives it kind of a, a knot look. And I think I will. I think I will. I'll put a little knot down here on this fence line. Got a little bit there. Just wiped it up. And you kind of get the idea. And there we have the faux wood background. I'm going to let this dry. And I will then do another video on how to do, I think it's, I think I'll do a heart, a heart with um, violets and stuff. I think that would be really pretty. Okay, I hope you enjoyed how to do a faux wood background. Um, you could also do it without knots, just do the streaks, a few lines for your wood grain and just skip the knots if that's too rustic. You can do it, as I said, in lighter tones, like in grays, where like it's a bleached out, um, what is that, beech wood? Uh, I can't remember what it's called, driftwood. That's what I'm looking for, the word. Uh, a driftwood look. This would be great for like fence pickets, like in a garden um, painting and just have fun use your imagination you could do it where the it's this way or you can do your painting this way so either way you have an idea of how to get wood grain and i'll also come back and i will show you the finished painting that i finish on here or do on here and then you can get an idea how it looks as a background